Hey Curious Travelers, hope all is well. It's Justa here. I am the founder of Curious on Tanzania and I am of course coming to you in my beautiful apartment in Brooklyn. Look at this. I am as colorful as it comes. This is how I come. Um, but like I wanted to come on. Thank God. I'm so happy to be back in New York, but New York is so dull. Like there's nothing happening. Um, which is, is crazy. Um, I was actually in Tanzania since September and now I am back. Um, I spent, I was there for almost like six months, seven months. Um, and I am back. I came back negative. Oh my God. My COVID test. Of course you have to take a COVID test because before you come back to the United States and my test came out negative and I was super happy. I am back in Brooklyn now and I want to be able to share with you all um, some of the protocols that I observed and um, some of the safety uh, measures that are happening both in Tanzania and also that you could be able to take in case you have a craving to come and visit our beautiful country, of course. I'm super excited for no good reason, I know. <laughs> I'm always super excited like this. Um, but of course, this is a very much a serious um, period of time is during the pandemic but i want to sure you guys are, um, have all the resources possible and you may when you're making your decision to visit like anywhere in africa at least you are aware of like what are the risks involved and how could you be able to um to to make a better decision when you travel um and as um a travel expert as a person who understands and loves tanzania so much i will talk to you guys about some of the um protocols that you could be able to take when you're traveling um to specifically to tanzania um like i said i left um i live in brooklyn and i traveled from jfk to go back into tanzania and when I was traveling, I did travel with my two nieces and also my 60 something year old mother. Um, and we went to Tanzania and spent, a, uh, they spent a month or two months and then they were able to come back to the US. Um, but like during our travel, um, when we were traveling to Tanzania in last September, it was, oh my God, it was like, like you would think we were going to like hell or something like that. It was at the airport, it was so intense. Um, they had, of course, we had to wear shields. We had to put on masks. Our hands were being sanitized like every single moment. Um, we did take um, uh, Qatar Airways, which is one of my favorite airlines to take because like, they're very good with safety keeping and all of that. And I've observed it all the way through my travels. Um, so like when we got on the plane, the plane was um, a capacity of 25%. Um, um, that's how many people were on it. Um, so we had a lot of rooms, like the kids were able to kind of like lay out and just sleep and just like kind of like um, enjoy themselves. But of course they had to wear a mask 24 seven. And then um, of course a mask and also a shield on their face. Um, and when we got to, um, when we got to Qatar, Oh boy, it was literally nobody was there. Nobody was empty. Nobody was there. If you're planning to travel to Tanzania, make sure you take a COVID test and you have to do it within 72 hours. That's what they're requesting. And you also, either 72 hours or three days prior, you take your COVID test. And of course you have to have your negative COVID test so you could be able to share it to your airlines. And then in case if Tanzania, they ask you about it, then you have to present that particular negative test. May they they do this um like kind of like requesting for tests on a random basis when you get to the airport in Tanzania, but in case they ask for it, you have to present it. You have no option but to present it. So I highly recommend that you take your COVID test seventy two hours prior to you traveling. It's of course for your own um mind. Um, to just make sure you come into a country you don't have, you're not going to come in and contaminate other people, but also vice versa too. Um, so that's one of my tips and my recommendations. Make sure you get your COVID test done. Tanzania requires or the airlines requires to be done within 72 hours or three days prior to your date of travel. Um, so we were able to do that when we got to Tanzania, they took our temperatures. It did not trigger. We were able to pass through um, The kids got their visas. Uh, of course, I am Tanzanian. I was able to just kind of like pass through like a queen um, Got into Tanzania. Tanzania is super open like we were in Dar es Salaam. 
there are some everything is super open we do a lot of stuff outdoors so we were i was able to take the kids out um majority like it's outdoors so like you have like social distance there um so the kids were able to enjoy um i mostly when when i was with the kids mostly i took them out um to like during the weekdays because during the weekdays not a lot of kids were out so they were able to enjoy like the resorts they were able to enjoy the parks nobody was there um weekends it was a lot of people there i mean it was a good number of people there so like i would take precautions as a parent um i mean I, I, as a um um, um <laughs> they're my nieces as an aunt um i was able to kind of like with my discretion make that judgment of like okay we will go here uh on a monday or on a tuesday i'll take you guys here on a monday tuesday wednesday because i know it wasn't too many people there and they could be able to enjoy themselves at the same time um so those are the precautions that we were taking when we were home every time they came home they had to wash their hands everything they were doing wash hands wash hands but the kids were kind of like used to it and um and and of course they knew like oh yeah there was corona so you explain to them like that they were able to kind of adjust to it um, and when you are in Tanzania, um, what I noticed was like almost everywhere you go, they have sanitizer. All, even if it's like a mom and pop place, they have a place where you could wash hands, hand washing station. So the hand washing stations were always there. Um, or like if they give you sanitizer at the table, they will give you a sanitizer, you put it on. So the precautions are being taken even on the local level. I noticed that while I was in Tanzania, when you go to like hotels, um, definitely before you walk in, you have to put on a mask. Um, they require that you have to sanitize your hands. Um, so all of that is required. Even when you're taking the ferry, if you're taking the ferry from, um, from Dar es Salaam to Zanzibar, from Zanzibar to this side, you are required to wash your hands. I will highly recommend when you're taking any public transportation, if you are taking any public transportation, just make sure you wear a mask, make sure you sanitize yourself um, and stick to private transportation. So we had our own vehicle um, and we were driving ourselves to majority of the places or you could hire somebody who you know um, they are safe um to drive you around so you don't have to take public transportation the only public transportation i'll probably say and if you take this particular public transportation if you're taking the ferry to go to zanzibar i would recommend you spend a little bit of money and do either the vip um level or you do the royal level so the vip will provide you um extra it's, it's more social distance if you do the economy and you you want to save money this is not a good time to kind of like save money you want to take um you want to take the vip the vip you have like your private room the, the chairs are bigger and they don't you're not pushed you, people are not pushing you to get on the ferry so you do have that freedom you get in first the first person to get in the last person to, i mean the first person to get out and so you have that convenience and not interacting with like so many people at the same time if you're not taking the ferry i would highly recommend to fly and the flights have like a small number of people so like a 12 um 12 passenger flight um you could be able to take and they fly frequently so you could be able to take that and you reach in zanzibar as soon as you get to zanzibar or you get to Dar es Salaam, private vehicles do a private car to get you to your next destination where you're going and then you should be um those are like prevent yourself from like being in some in like big crowds and big crowds is like going to probably like Kadiako market or like going to somewhere where it's like a lot of people put on a mask and like prevent yourself that way and then also wash your hands at the same time um so i did talk about the covid test i did talk about um ways of like social distancing yourself um even if you're with kids just make sure you take protocols um do activities during the weekdays um and save the weekend for something like a little bit more slow, maybe um, doing activity at home or something like that or at the hotel, but like activities during the weekdays are even better um, if you're traveling, if you choose to travel with your kids. Um, and then of course, another tip, when it comes, with, when you're traveling to Tanzania, um, I would recommend to stay in like boutique hotels. Um, so when you stay in boutique hotels, a lot of them have like, we stayed at, um, uh, Villa Serenity and Villa Serenity you just basically have the whole 
um, the whole villa to yourself. And of course you have your chefs coming in, you have everything is like private and it's not like a lot of people there, but I mean, nobody there was, when we were there, nobody was there, all it was just us. And so we had this whole beautiful beach to ourselves and we were able to enjoy it. Um, also staying at boutique hotels, usually they're like less than 20, they have like less than like 15 rooms, I guess you could say. Um, and the beauty of that, they are very, they, they are like clean. Um, and you could be able to have like a one-on-one -on -one with the, um, with the business owners. Um, and they could tell you like all the protocols that they're taking, um, versus if you're staying in like a big resort, it's a lot of traffic, a lot of movement. And you have to, of course, you definitely have to take more precautions on there. So I highly recommend to try out the boutique hotels because they are taking more precaution and they are also trying to save their businesses. So they will want to take every precaution possible to make you feel comfortable. And, um, they don't, they don't have that much traffic going. Um, so highly recommend boutique hotels. Uh, Villa Serenity was one of my favorites we even had like our own private beach um that we were at so highly recommend that um another recommendation so that was we talked about covid we talked about um health we talked about um a tip on where to stay um the other thing i'll highly highly recommend is to use a travel expert when you're traveling um, so why use a travel expert, um, especially if you're traveling to Africa, when you're traveling to like somewhere you have never been before or any anybody who's traveling with you has never been, I will highly, at this particular time, get a travel advisor, um, get a, a travel expert, get a travel agent to kind of help you maneuver this whole world. So we are... Um, Curious in Tanzania is it, we we do we are like a travel agent that you could be able to with our guidance you, If you want to travel to Tanzania, we could guide you along on how to travel to Tanzania safely um, If you end up with like emergencies when you're in the country, we have the resources to be able to help you um, In terms of like what is the next thing that needs to be done? We know we will be on top of it once we plan your trip um, we'll be on top of it. We will know any, everything that needs to be okay. Maybe, for example, an emergency happens. Um, like, for example, this was three years ago. I had clients who were, um, they were both 72 years old. It was a husband and wife. And in the middle of their safari, the third day, <laughs> third day on their safari, um, the wife ended up feeling like she wasn't feeling good. She felt like she had like shortness of breath and she was in the middle of the Serengeti. Um, so they, um, they reached out, um, our driver reached out to us and told us, um, what happened and we had to make a quick decision just like that. Um, and that decision was bringing in a helicopter and like, it was an emergency rescue. No question, no, nothing. It's like, okay, let's get our, um, um, medical team up and like, let's rescue them and we took them to our private doctor the private doctor observed us she stayed at one of our accommodations um in moshi for three days um to just check our condition and how she's um she's doing and then of course the doctors were coming in and out um to just make sure she was okay and we have private i like i we take good care of like our um the guests who come over and then from there they they were traveling to tanzania for almost like a whole month um, and that was only their third day. So like they had booked everything. Everything was already, um, set. They had paid for everything. Um, so I ended up asking them, I was like, um, what, um, do you guys want to go back now to the U S or do you, what do you want to do? And the husband actually said, he was like, I, we want to continue with our trip. And part of their trip was coming to Dar es Salaam. And the husband actually wanted to, he was scheduled in his trip. He wanted to learn Swahili. And also he wanted to have like an immersed experience in Dar es Salaam. And that was the rest of their trip. Uh, and the wife was supposed to actually go to Malawi. Um, in Malawi, she was volunteering in Malawi. Um, so like when that happened, it was, it put them are they kind of like, okay, should I go? Should I not? So they reached out to us again and they were like, okay, this is what, um, I, you know exactly what happened. What should we do? Um, we want to do this. Can, can my wife be able to stay with me in the rest of them, um, during the rest of my trip instead of her going to Malawi? Um, so I was like, yes, please. Um, they were doing a homestay in one of our residents. Um, so like, yes, they came and stayed with us for the remaining of the, um, of the three weeks. Um, the, hus the husband 
was going to his classes, which was Swahili classes and learning Swahili every day. And then out, he went in the morning and then in the afternoon he came back, we had lunch ready for them. They sat down, ate lunch together, and then we prepared like a simple activity after that. Either they went to the beach or they met up with different professors who spoke Swahili and learned about the history of Swahili. Um, they went to the village museum and checked out the beautiful museum. We went to, um, since they did not finish off their safari, there is um, Dar es Salaam has um, a zoo. So we did the zoo in Dar es Salaam. And, and it was more like of an immersed experience. And I, the one thing I remember was us just sitting down with them and just like for them to share their love. And oh, I did not tell you guys this. It was actually a black and white couple. So it was an interracial um, couple that came to Tanzania. The, the husband was black and the wife was of course white. Um, and so they were in their seventies. So they told us amazing stories about, um, about their love about their love in the 80s and the struggle that they went through when it came to um when it came to racism and love and 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 how they kind of were able to maintain their love together and you could even see it like the husband was so like caring like he he did everything for the, the wife and the wife also did the same like the, their love like i loved waking up every morning and seeing that the love that they had for each other um, for those three weeks that we were there, they were there visiting us. Um, and when it was, uh, of course, like in between, um, we had doctors who came um, to see her to make sure she was okay, which she was. Um, but it was just to check up to make sure everything was fine. Um, and so the last day, since we were cooking for them, um, my sh our chef, uh, who was Helena, I love, I loved her. Um, she was the one who was cooking everything. So like on the last day, we were like, you know what? You guys need to make us a meal that you guys love. Um, and so the, we, we were able to go to the local market and do some shopping. And um, the wife, her name was Karen. Karen was able to buy everything. And actually the husband, the husband went and like we all bought all the ingredients that they needed. And they made us actually juca or cassava. And I think it was with meat, with like ground meat. It was so good. Um, and we invited the tour guides. We invited like everybody who was involved into their journey to be able to share this meal with us. Um, and when they came back to the US, they said that was one of the best trips that they ever had. Um, and so like obstacles like this, like for me to share this story is to say that things happen in life is a lot that happens in life, but it's how we go about it. It's how we, we, we show up at that particular day, at that particular moment. And for us as uh, travel experts, we always want to make sure we provide the hospitality that we have promised people from the beginning all the way to the end. Or even if there's circumstances that happen, as, um, as tour operators, as the destination management company, we want to, or as people, period, as Tanzanians, we want to make sure that you are safe. Um, and we want to make sure we recommend the best experiences for you. And this experience, although it did not turn out exactly how they planned, because they were supposed to, um, they were supposed to do safari, which were, they were going to um, Serengeti. Um, they were going to Tarangire, they were going to Ngorongoro Crater, and then they were supposed to go to Zanzibar to spend a couple of days in Zanzibar. Um, they were, they had like so many activities that they had to do, but since this happened, it kind of like cut their trip short, but they were able to experience like an immersive experience and get to connect with each other even more, but also connect with us as locals. Um, so like that brings me to share with you, um, an experience that has always been there. Um, the experience is called, um, slow travel. Um, so if you're looking um, to to travel at this current time, I would or we would recommend for you to travel uh, like the, the travel slowly movement or travel slow um, or slow travel, you will call it. What is slow travel? Um, you probably might be asking, well, like, 
just what do you mean slow travel so basically what slow travel is is you just take your time you know how before we had like 10 days and within those 10 days is packed with this old checklist like i have to check this off i'll check this off i'll check this off i'll check that off so when it comes to slow travel is the way we are doing it i'll explain it the way we are doing it with curious on tanzania so we have formulated um something um when it comes to slow travel we have also incorporated to one of our residents that we have so we have um, a residency called zawadi residence and basically what zawadi residence is 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 um it's a program for like creatives um who are looking to see tanzania but also have projects that they're working on and they want to work remotely, but yet they want to travel also at the same time. But yet COVID is happening at the same time. So there's so many things are happening that we are now thinking to travel slowly. So slow travel is basically just taking your time to immerse yourself in the culture, to immerse yourself with the particular country, to immerse yourself in like one, like an area where you just call it, this is my home base, and then you just travel within there. Um, so that's what slow travel is. <laughs>